Today, Carolyn is presenting her last speech from the Speaking to Inform Manual. This is project number five, the abstract concept. Carolyn grew up in Fredericton. Her dad was the head of sociology and anthropology at the University of New Brunswick. This is a story that originates with her academics that surrounded her as a teenager. Please welcome Carolyn, presenting a speech, Plano Terrestrialists. Mm -hmm. stopped at Raleigh's restaurant in Hope. It's a family restaurant. It's about the first time. Yeah, it's about the first restaurant you hit when you're passing through Hope, going to like Camels. I stopped there a couple of times. But did you notice the little sign they had pasted to the wall? It said, Flat Earth Society meets here. And so today, uh, fellow communicators and almost not guests, um, this is going to be my story about the Flat Earth Society. Now, the Flat Earth theory has been around for a very long time, but mostly way back in the dark ages, well, dark ages, also the middle ages, uh, people thought that the earth was like a record. And uh, later groups postulated that Antarctica ran around the uh, circumference of this. And um, so anyway, because I saw the sign at Hope, I was sort of thought this might be an interesting subject to look more into. It kind of goes, jives with my whole sort of interest level. So I looked it up and I even talked to my brother and my mother about my speech because I like to involve them. And I said, Flat Earth Society. <laughs> my brother said, yeah, I remember that. I remember my dad saying, he was a professor of sociology, I remember him saying people were very gullible and that there were these experiments that people liked to do, like Ron Hubbard who established a religion, Scientology. He's a science fiction writer, but he got people to believe. And so at this party, which may have happened in my parents' house when I was 13, in a room full of the blue smoke, because back then everybody smoked cigarettes, drinking, lots of gin, probably lots of tweed sports jackets. 1970, Fredericton. Fredericton, New Brunswick, of all places. A couple of academics, party of 20 to 30, my mom said her parties used to be. They sat around drinking, and they said to each other, People will believe anything. What's the most outlandish thing that we can get them to believe in? <laughs> so one guy says, called over to, hey Leo, how about flat earth? And Leo Ferrari said, yeah, ah, that's a good one. Yeah, the earth is flat, yeah. Leo Ferrari was a professor at St. Thomas University and uh, that's on the big hill in Fredericton. There's St. Thomas, and then there's the University of New Brunswick. St. Thomas is a Catholic liberal arts college, and that's where Leo Ferrari <coughs> taught philosophy. And some of these other guys, they were writers. There was Alden Nolan from uh, Nova Scotia, who was a poet. And there was, my mom remembers him. Oh, Liz brought him along a couple times. And he was a friend of theirs. And, uh, so in 1970, after they had this wild party where they decided that they were going to fly with this idea, they formed the Flat Earth Society of Canada. In 1973, they decided hey, we're starting to talk to Americans and other people, let's just call it the Flat Earth Society. 
And they call themselves clown terrestrialists to, uh, so that they would not be confused with the globalists. And their motto, we're on the level. <laughs> And they had a journal called The Official Organ. This is a bunch of literary academics. Uh, so they had a sense of humor. And it was supposed to be a, um, a satirical organization. And they were drinking and working buddies. So for those of you who don't know where Fredericton, New Brunswick is, this is supposed to be a red, red map of Canada. So we're way over, like way over here. But this is the eastern Canada, the Great Lakes. Toronto's over there. And right here is where Fredericton, New Brunswick is. And that is where this group met and uh, organized from. So they decided that Leo Ferrari, the philosopher, was going to be the president because he had the academic background, he had a PhD, and they thought that it looked good. He looked like an expert. And uh, Alden Nolan, he was a Nova Scotia poet, and uh, he became um, the next biggest, and then Raymond uh, Fraser, he became the chair, <coughs> and Alden Nolan, he became the symposiarch, because he liked that grandiose sounding name, master of a public debate or discussion. <laughs> and they met up at uh, Alden Nolan's house on Windsor Street, and they dubbed that Windsor Castle. And then they uh, recruited Gwendolyn McEwen as an executive vice president, and she was a poet out of Toronto. See, they started to expand it to the rest of Canada. And then uh, they, they got Barley Mowat, who wrote about nature. He joined their group. And then Lawrence Block, an American uh, mystery writer, he put in his preface in one book, The Earth is Flat, and they said, oh, we've got live one! <laughs> and they invited him, and he joined. And it became very difficult to uh, join this group because they wanted to make sure you, were, you understood that it was a joke. And uh, Al Pittman was in Newfoundland. He was the official rep at the edge of the earth. <laughs> and then uh, the group disbanded in like 1985 because this had been uh, Leo Ferrari's kind of coping mechanism with his divorce to have something to pour his <laughs> efforts into. And uh, the group in Hope, what they are is they drink coffee. And you have to be over 72 to join <laughs> and semi-senile, or you have to be, uh, you could be younger, but with an IQ of less than 25. <laughs> what they do is they meet once or twice a day at Raleigh's restaurant, and they have a lottery. And the lottery is if you win, and you get the privilege of buying coffee for everybody else. So if you go through Hope, you should check them out. <laughs>